the, this this claim that he apostated because he scribed something uh, mm. from the Quran, chapter 23, verse 14. Now, the issue is, is that Ibn Sar wasn't even a Muslim when chapter 23 was revealed. He became a Muslim afterwards, so he couldn't have been a scribe. Now, the, now he did actually apostate. That claim is true. He did apostate, but then he reverted back to Islam prior to the conquest of Mecca. However, this uh, this narration of him uh, apostatizing because of uh, you know he scribed uh, chapter twenty three verse fourteen is 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 unfounded because he wasn't even a Muslim at the time when it was revealed. Okay, cool. Uh, Pepeway, before you respond to his point that he made right now, I would like to maybe allow Rob Christian to maybe uh, make some comments on what's been being discussed at the moment. So I want to unmute Brother Rob Christian. Uh, Brother Rob, hope you can hear me. And I hope, uh, yeah, cool, excellent. So Rob, uh, you heard our friend Mohammed yes. um, repeating his points. What would you like to respond to these points, well, please? Well, uh, what I heard, he clearly says that he has nothing to say about Sahih Bukhari Hadith. And he didn't provide any authentic source that actually refutes our point. Actually, if we go to uh, to Tafsir Jalalain and we mention chapter 7, ayah 157, where Muhammad is called an nabi al back to back with chapter 2, ayah 78, where the Jews who are spiritually dead want to be spiritually dead Jews are called the Jews who are al ummiyuna right? Al-Ummiyuna, uh, plural, ummi Singular. So if we go to Tafsir Jalalain for the same chapter 7, I 157, it says, let me read it, right? It says the following. Those who follow the messenger, the uninstructed prophet. Did you catch it? Those who follow the messenger, the uninstructed prophet. Why is he called the uninstructed prophet? Because he didn't receive the divine revelation from God yet. Hence why the Jews and the Christians are called not Ummiyun, Jahili, right? It, they are called people of the book because we receive the Torah, the Injil, and the Zabur, the Psalms. That proves my point, right? So when it comes to religion, Ummi or Ummiyun, plural, it has nothing to do with someone who cannot read and write. It has to do, and as Tafsir Jalalain also back up what we said, it has everything to do with someone who is spiritually dead he is not guided by god's scripture yet bam okay so i would like to well i would like to uh, allow, i would like to I, I would like to allow uh, our friend mohammed to respond to this point uh, thank you uh, um, brother rob mohammed your mic yeah um, chapter 77 he's saying over here that ummi yun or ummi when referring, al -Ummi, re referring to the Prophet, doesn't mean he cannot read or write. Now, I'm looking at Tafsir ibn Kathir on my screen, and it says precisely that. Uh, those who follow the messenger who can neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Angel. This is the description of the Prophet Muhammad in the books of the Prophets. They delivered the good news of his advent to their nations and commanded them to follow him. His descriptions were apparent in their books, as their rabbis and priests will know him. Uh, Imam Muhammad recorded that Abu Shakar al Uqayli said that a Bedouin man said to him, I brought a milk producing camel to Medina during the life of, uh, lifetime of Allah's messenger. After I sold it, I said, I meet that man, Muhammad, and hear from him. So I passed uh, by while he was walking uh, between Abu Bakr and Umar, and I followed him. Uh, and then he goes on. Uh, and he quotes, I, I asked uh, you did, by... Right. Yeah, so anyway, it's a, it's a long hadith. However, it does not say okay, that cool. uh, it's a, a spiritual thing. It specifically refers to um, being unable to read or write. Okay, can I answer? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. he um, we we provided tafsira Jalalain. He, and, uh, and why are they called Jalalain? Because it's Jalal number one, who is the teacher, and the other one is the student, also called Jalal. So Al Jalalain, he throws two brothers. They are teacher and student. 
No, they're brothers. No, you're wrong. Go, go, go do some homework. Anyway, forget about it. Okay. The thing is, it's uh, Tafsir al Jalalain clearly states, and you, you threw both al Jalalains under the bus, right? So, and by reading uh, uh, the other Tafsir, we have two contradictory uh, Tafsirs. One tafsir says this, other tafsir says that. And we provided two ayahs from the Quran, chapter 2, ayah 7 and 8. Let me speak, just quickly, please. Sorry, I, I, just quickly. Let me, let, let me speak. Let me finish. Let me finish his point, and, you, and then I will give you a chance to, sure. to revive his point. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I read it. I read it. No, maybe you can put it also I, on the screen, uh, brother. Chapter 7, ayah 157 from Tafsir Jalalain. It says again, those who follow the messenger, the uninstructed prophet, and uh, and if you grab the translation from uh, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Ali, you will see that Muhammad is called the Gentile prophet. He is not called, he is not called someone who cannot write and read. He is called the Gentile prophet, the uninstructed prophet, to, according to Tafsir Jalalain. So should we throw Ibn Kathir under the bus or should we throw a Jalalain? Both a Jalalain under the bus. You can pick your cherries, my friend. Okay, so Mohammed will reply. The thing uh, is, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, is is what is on the screen? Is that supposed to be Tafsir uh, al is, is this what's supposed to be on your screen? If you want Jalalain, let's go to Tafsir al So remind yeah. me the idea once again. So it's seven. No, sorry. Seven. Seven. One fifty-seven. One fifty-seven. So I'm yeah. going to go to one fifty-seven, which is right here. And this is the comment. Uh, Rob, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Does can uh, does Ummi uh, can Ummi mean illiterate? Ummi can have three meanings in Arabic. Uh, I'm asking for a specific. I'm asking a specific no, question. No, no. Does you are asking, mean, you are asking, asking a specific question. You are you are asking can it the mean question. Illiterate. It can mean, but it has three meanings. Right. Someone okay. who is part of an ummah is an ummi. Yeah. Someone who is part of a nation. Someone right. who is illiterate and. Uh, Point okay. number three, meaning number three is someone who is spiritually dead, someone who did not receive the, uh, any scripture from God yet, right? So, so you have three I, meanings. Yes, okay. So I have... Um, Can you read the Tafsir al Jalalain, please, before we uh, want to... Uh, what do you call it? It's, it's uh, very on small on my screen. I know, yeah. it's very small on my screen. I can't see it very Can well. you read it? Uh, so it says, oh, or... wait, hold on. Yeah, okay, it says uninstructed. Okay. Follow. It, right, it says uninstructed. It says uninstructed prophet. Okay. So Thank it says you. uninstructed. Thank so you. the question would right, be... That's what it says. No, have, that's what it says. Uh, but in why, why do we have three tafsirs? So what do we have? What, okay. what, what's the question, Boy? Once again? For what is, uh, why do we have contradictory three. tafsirs? Yeah. Now, uh, uninstructed, is that contradictory to illustrate? That will be the yes. question. Yes, because no, he did not, not receive the Quran yet. This is why we are called the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. Muhammad is called uninstructed. Question. What? It was a rhetorical question. Answer the question then. Answer right. The okay. Question. Um, no, because uninstructed could mean uninstructed in write, in reading or writing. He doesn't. He's not learned. Uninstructed could also mean unlearned. No, it does not mean that. It means someone who did not get instruction from God yet. That's what it means. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. There is no tafsir that says that says he wasn't. He didn't yet receive. Uh, okay. Then why? Are, God, can you, at the okay. time, hold on. Hold on. Let me no, finish no. my point. Can you, can you then read chapter the 2, Isaiah 78, and Rob, to tell us why Rob, the Jews are called Umiyun? Rob, tell us why the Jews are called Rob, Umiyun. Chapter Rob, 2, Isaiah 78. Uh, yeah, to, we we we'll go. We we'll definitely go to that ayah, uh, Rob. Now, but let, not, let me make let me make, let me make a yeah. point, and then we go to that ayah. Okay. Cool. Let's go, go Mohammed. All right. Um. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. So seven one fifty seven. Okay. Now, why can it not mean that he didn't yet receive instruction from Allah or receive revelation from Allah? It's because chapter seven was re uh, was revealed after chapter ninety six, which was the very first chapter. No? How can he? How can he refer to someone who hasn't yet received uh, revelation from Allah when he has already received revelation from Allah? Because uh, it's it talking. No because uh, it's talking about uh, uh, the Nabi that you uh, can find in sorry. the Torah and the Injil. That's why. Right. Okay. You need to. You need to. Uh, let me finish my points. Okay. Well, you make a point. No, so I want to address it. This I, is why I'm addressing right, what you say. 
Okay, but, no, yeah. I haven't finished. Okay, make a point. No, having... He says, "Who? Yeah, yeah. We'll move says, on whom they will find in, uh, in uh, described or inscribed in the Torah and Gospel." So this is talking about a description. Okay, so this is not talking about someone who has not yet received revelation. This is talking about a description of someone within their own scriptures. So your your point um, makes no sense at all. Now, when you're saying, uh, you know, we've got the same word being mentioned in two in two separate verses, that's a false equivocation. Just because the same word is is uh, being used in two different verses, it doesn't mean that it carries the same connotations, does it? Of course, it does. Why are the Jews no, called Omiyun while they can read and write? Go ahead, explain chapter two seventy eight to the audience. Why are they okay. called Omiyun? Plural from Omi. Oh, okay. Yeah, please answer that. Well, first of all, before we go to yeah, uh, Mohammed, please answer yes. this. We go to the next slide. Um, cool. All yeah. right. Uh, no, after 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 I address this, I'm going to go because uh, you know it, I'm very tired. I've had a long day. Um, now, first of all, he's, uh, Rob says that uh, of course it carries the same connotation. If the same, if one, if a word is used, it carries the exact same connotation. Now we could use the word. We could uh, uh, debunk this very quickly by using the word tawaffa. Okay. Now, in the tawaffa in the Quran is used several times. However, it doesn't always mean death. Sometimes yes, it, it means sleep. No, no it, doesn't, it doesn't. Because if you're reading no, chapter six, verse sixty, Allah no, says tawaffa. Okay, if you're gonna let me, if you're not gonna let me speak, I'll ask JC to mute you. Uh, um, Rob, in chapter, Rob, in uh, chapter, Mohammed, Mohammed, yes, uh, well, hold on, a second. Uh, Rob, let le le make his point, and I will allow you to make your final point before we go sure. to the next slide. Sure, sure. Go, Mohammed. Okay, so he's saying he doesn't. So in Surah An An'am, chapter six, verse sixty, yeah. He says, "Who will lead to wafa? Yet to wafa come bilain wa yalamu." Okay. Now, over here saying in translation, and it says, He who takes your souls by night and knows what you have committed by day. So when we go to sleep, we're not actually dead. Allah has taken uh, our souls, but not in death. This is while, while we're sleeping. So to, the term to wafa from the root word wafa doesn't always mean death, as in. You know, dead in the Quran all the time. Okay, so you are wrong, Rob, when you say that the that if a specific word point. is being Finish. used, it, it carries the same connotation, and that's me done. But then, Thank you. A good point, you. before Rob jumps in, yeah, sure, go on. the case that's a different word. So we that could be that's a no, case uh, of vocation it's because not a different word. I'm looking at this word specifically. No say is rob made the claim that because uh the same word is there it carries the exact same meaning even though under a different context and i'm saying no that's not the case because if you just because a word is there it doesn't mean it's going to carry the same connotation throughout hence why words have different connotations rob Okay, the f the funny thing is he didn't go to chapter two, I seventy eight to prove my point because he know what will happen next. To about the sleeping part, according to Islam, show me one uh, scholar who agrees with what you said. According to Islam, when you go to sleep, actually you are dead in your sleep, and the word tawaffa tawaffaytani mutawafika is always talking about death. I'm an Arabic speaker, my friend. When someone asks me, Rob Christian, wh where is your father? My father uh, died a couple of years ago. I will say, Abuya Tawaffa. Uh, my father is died. When the word Tawaffa is used in the Quran, it has only one meaning. It only means death. According to Islam, when you sleep, you, you die in your sleep. Don't tell me why that is, because that's what Islam teaches. That's no, the this is... logical point. Okay. Sh okay. Show me one uh, tafsir, show me one scholar who agrees with what you said. Okay, I challenge you. Second, why didn't you go to chapter 2, IS 78 to answer my question? And I made a claim why are no the problem. Jews are called Ummiyuna? Right? Ummiyuna. 
No, it does not it say that. It refers to them as the unless. It does say that. Go to it. Okay, look, go. Just it says anyone. Okay, go and read it. Okay, read it. Read it. Read it. Okay. Anyone. It, everyone has got access to the internet. Alhamdulillah. Okay. okay anyone can go it. into Quran.com. Yeah, and look at and look at the translation for themselves. Yeah, it says and among them are unlettered ones. Yeah. So women hum umiyun. So from among them are unlettered ones. La yalamul kitab. They don't know the scripture. Okay. Continue reading. Continue. Illa illa illa. Illa Amaniya wa in uh wa in hum illa uh yadunnun. Okay. So these people who don't know the scripture continue to the just, next verse. Continue to the next verse. No, you know, well, hold on. You asked me to read 78 and now 78, 79, because that's the context. 78, 79 yeah. is coming now. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so 79 for way ladina yiktabuna. So this is See what what what, this what? Is let, this is a let, different category. Uh, okay? Different, different. It's no, still it's a talking different about the Jews. Of the, of the Jews. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Let me, you, you said let me okay. make my point now. I I know why I mentioned. I haven't, I haven't people, finished. You no, asked me to no, read. No, you, you to, did you finish. You, you said Rob, you said those people finished. cannot read. That's what you said. Let I me let me refute it. Let me refute it, please. Rob, Mohammed, 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 Mohammed. Let let me give you my chance to refute because you obviously make you you ample time to make your point. Um, if you remember, so give me the courtesy to res to, re to respond What's to this point. Huh? Is 279. Um, yeah, general laying commentary on Surah 279. So, Mohammed, uh, Rob Christian is going to refute your points, address your points, and then we'll give you a chance to uh, answer back. Go, on, Rob. Okay, thank you. It says in chapter 78, and of them, so among them are. Unluttered ones, Ummiyuna, who know, who know not the book, but vain desires, and they do but conjecture. And if you continue to the next verse, it's still talking about those Jews. Because when we ask Muslims, show us an ayah in the Quran that says that the Torah is corrupted, they immediately go to chapter 2, ayah 78 and 79. And here is why. If you continue reading, it's still talking about those among them, among the Jews, not all the Jews, just a small group. If we continue reading to 79, the next verse, it says, Hoten unto those who write out the book. Who are those the, the among group among the Jews who write the book with their own hands? So it's it's actually not saying that they cannot write and read. They are they know how to read and write, but they think they know the Torah, but they are spiritually dead. They are wannabe Jews, and it's talking about only a group of them. So chapter two, I 78, and you can actually start from 75 all the way to 79 because that's the entire context of the story it's talking about jews who are fake jews wannabe jews spiritually dead jews hence ummiyuna when you say in the arabic uh, uh the when you talk about al jahiliya those arab pagans you call them in arabic ummiyuna because they are pagans they they are jahili right they are pagans they don't know the scripture of allah they are not muslims hence why they are called jahili Right, we, who a jail? He is. He doesn't know. He is ignorant. Right. So I'll just read the verse for everyone who can't see it. So it just says, and "Read the verse, and then allow Muhammad to respond, and then we'll yeah. go to the next slide." Yeah. So it says, "Among them are the unlettered ones who do not know the scripture, except in wishful thinking, but they are only assuming." So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then say this is from Allah in order to exchange it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn. Hadouken. Yeah. That's okay. So I will give, like, uh, as promised, I will give Mohammed the last word on this discussion and then we'll go you. to the next slide. Okay. All right. So um, uh, Rob is uh, praising himself on his Arabic. Uh, home. Among them, so it's not talking about all the Jews now. One nine, he's trying to say when he says Lilladina Yuktubuna is referring to the same to the same people who are referred to as Ummiyun. Now there is nothing to back that up. Okay, absolutely nothing. Uh according to what he's saying, uh for him. Now, even this. Uh, I don't know what you hear from Muslims now. This is not even talking about the Torah. It's actually talking about other scriptures. They write other scriptures, okay? And 
say that it's from God. So they write something and then they say this is scripture and this came from God. So this is not actually referring to the Torah. Um, ah, no, no, suddenly the, it doesn't is, refer to is, Torah. Guys, and this is in the Tafasir. Said? When we ask Rob, Muslims, I, show Rob, us one ayah what is talking Rob. about the Torah, it's corrupted. They go to chapter 2, ayah 79. But now, oh, because yeah. he knows can you he feels the heat. Can you <laughs> Rob, Rob, thank you. Do you see Rob, what's happening, guys? Do you see what's Rob. happening? Okay, cool. I want to be neutral. Uh, I yeah. want to mute Rob and minutes, please your point, uh, Mohammed. Yeah, just 30 okay. seconds. Then, yeah. Uh, 20 seconds. So, um, I lost my trailer. Okay, so now uh, he's laughing because he's only used to hearing what other Muslims uh, claim. He hasn't done any research on what the Tafasir actually say and what the scholars say. Yuktubun al Kitab, yeah, and then they say it's from God. Okay, so this is other. This is other than uh, the Torah. Okay, uh, the scholars have said that this could uh, refer to the Talmud and uh, 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 other scriptures um, that they that they claim is from uh, from God. Uh, okay, yeah. So again, this idea of Ummiyun being uh, Meaning spiritual, there is there is nothing in any Islamic source that says that this is talking about Jews who are spiritually dead. In fact, it, uh, when it talks about the Jews who are spiritually dead, that is way further back in Surah Al Baqarah and it's throughout the Quran where you know Allah talks that it talks about them specifically being ignorant and being arrogant and you know spiritually dead. Over here, he's referring to them being illiterate, to certain Jews being illiterate, not knowing the Scripture. Uh, and then verse 29 is about a different group of Jews who write the um, write the scripture and claim it's from God and sell it for a measly price. Um, but yeah, that's that's me done. So Mohammed, just um, quick, are you back. saying that illiterate means that they <laughs> are properly illiterate or not or are spiritually? They're, no, they're properly they properly okay. illiterate. It's not because this is no, there is no spiritual meaning. And the thing is, let, let me just say, I'm just looking at Rob is trying to. Make your point, make, make a point, uh, just people, just wait, and then we we'll go to I'm looking at some of the tafsirs. So, Al Tusari, for example, says, Who not know the book but only see therein their own desires? He said, This means that they rest their hopes in God based upon falsehood, inclining towards the desire of their lower selves without following the guidance from God. This is referring to the Jews. Uh, Al Kishari says, and there were some of them that are illiterate, not knowing the scripture, but only desires and mere conjectures. There you go. Uh, uh, so it says illiterate. Uh, it says illiterate. Yes. Yeah, Within so the very tafsir, it says illiterate. Yeah. So it refers so it to them as being illiterate. Some of them that are illiterate, not knowing the scriptures. Yeah, which is what, exactly what the verse says. Yeah. So it's this not. This is saying, what two seventy eight says. So it's not saying they're literally uh, illiterate. It's saying they're. Oh, not it says, no, it says they. Uh, you just said. You just uh, read it. I can't yeah. see it. It's one. Let me say it again. And there are some yeah, of them that what are illiterate, knowing the scripture, desires and mere conjectures. Conjectures. Yeah. So in they the, are illiterate in the scripture. They are illiterate. In the so they don't know the scripture. So they are illiterate uh, with the scripture. So they only, um, you know, they interpret, in, in, they interpret it. They interpret it in a way that. They interpret it in a way that they want because they don't understand the scripture. They they are illiterate. So they don't know how to read the scripture, so they interpret it how they wish. So this is that, this is in the, this is in a series explicitly saying illiterate. But anyway, guys, uh, I do have to go. I mean, it's ne nearly midnight. Can uh, I? Can yeah. I? Before you go, can I? Can I refute you? <laughs> Allow yes, me to. Refute uh, you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I didn't say uh, you know. I, I try. I tried. I tried. Right. Yes. Mohammed, uh, okay, cool. Mm. So obviously, um, okay, uh, I know I'm gonna break the rules a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna allow uh, Rob to make some comments to uh, to your points. Yeah, you said I was gonna and, have a last word. And if you would like to uh, maybe have a last word before you leave, then you're most welcome. So Rob, uh, what would you like to say to to our friend Mohammed here now? Yeah, the f the funny thing is when we when we ever ask Muslims to show us one ayah, just one ayah where it says that the Torah is corrupted, they immediately, without any hesitation, they go to chapter two, ayah seventy nine, to tell us, oh, this is about the Torah. Suddenly. Suddenly, the ayah is not about the Torah. It seems about some, uh, you know, about something, you know, 
it's still about the Jews, but it's not about the Torah. Suddenly, guys, do you, do you see? Do you see the funny uh, double standard? Anyway, forget about that. It but, says if we go to Tafsir Jalalain, it says, and there are some of them, the Jews, the Jews, not the Japanese, but the Jews, that are illiterate, unlettered, not knowing the Scripture, the Torah, but only desires lies which were handed down to them by their leaders. So that does not mean they cannot read and write. They are spiritually unlettered. And that's my whole point. My point is <laughs> chapter 7, I 157, back to back to chapter 2, I 78, 79. It proves my point that these people does not mean that they cannot read and write. They are illit illiterate, spiritually illit illiterate. It does not mean they cannot read and write. It means they can read and write, but they are just spiritually dead. They are dead when it comes to faith, right? They believe in their imams. Like you Muslims, you only listen to your imams. You know nothing about Islam. And this is my proof. And people can be the judge. Thank you for allowing me to refute yeah. this line. Thank you.